scattered at every street corner. Now this morning in Don's message, he was telling us about staying fresh, which to me, even as much as I do this, it's still ironic how God works because he had laid this in my heart two or three weeks ago. It, it just amazes me how he works like that together. <clears throat> and we can see the similarities. And the first thing that struck me about this, this verse was, is what is the gold in the stones of the church? We are. Gold. And you can thank my wife for the slideshow so you have something to look at besides me tonight. She put this together for me. Gold. <clears throat> we all know it is a precious metal and measures of weight and brilliance, splendor, and great riches. Catham is the Hebrew word for fine gold and pure gold. Think about the pure, not mixed. With anything else, clean and not uh, harmful in any way, having a smooth and clean, clear sound that's not mixed with any other sound. We are the gold and the stone of the church. We either shine with God's glory or we lose our luster and become dull. And what happens when we become dull and we do not shine with God's glory? We become complacent. We are satisfied with how things are and not work, working to change them. We're going to change gears here for a minute. We're going to take a little trip into the past because as all of this was coming to me, this part came to me as Sister Jana was preaching the other night. So we got some pictures to look at. This is our first one. How many remembers this picture? Yeah. Some of us older people will remember these things. <clears throat> I can remember this on the TV whenever I was younger. And how many of us remember the old TVs? Yep. Ray showed one of the old TVs. They were big, bulky, and had such nice cabinets that when they broke down, we could use them for furniture. We didn't get rid of them. We just put another TV on top of them. And I can remember at one time we had a we had a got a, a TV that had push buttons on it. We were uptown with the push button TV. They most of them they had two knobs on them. One was for VH, one was for uh, U UH, UHV. Yeah, and uh, you know they were they were they were quite the deal of their time. But the thing I remember about them the most was the rabbit ears. You constantly had to adjust. <clears throat> and if you had a set that had the adjustment knob on them, you were ahead of the game. Because <laughs> you could do a lot more with one like that than ones that didn't. And you see, we were not hooked up to cable or to satellite or even to an outside of antenna. So most of the times, if you still couldn't get a station in and did, and what did we do then? We put tinfoil all over. <laughs> and if you had a dad like mine that either wanted to watch the news or OU, Cowboy, or OU Sooners play or the Dallas Cowboys play, you did whatever it took to get those stations in. Even if it meant you standing there holding on to those antennas. 
Now, we did not have all the fancy TVs that we do today <clears throat> and, or the fancy accessories, except for one thing. We had remotes. Every one of my dad's TVs growing up had five remotes. This is a picture of his favorite one. Wrong one. That's a remote from the day we did not have. Show the favorite one. You backed up. Back it up. Keep going. There we go. That's me when I was about four. Now, I say all that. You can take me off of there. I, I say all this to say this. This was my TV in India. I seen a total of probably about four or five TVs the whole time I was in India. One of them, the one I watched the most was when we were sitting at the police station. And it's because I was trying to get my mind to other places besides the police station. <laughs> yeah, or what they were discussing in there. Uh, but this, this was the view out my bedroom window. And that was, for nine days, my TV. I would see people come and I'd see them go. You know? And it, what you said a while ago, man, it, it's in here. Because when we were in India, you know, I got to talking to Brother Don. Because I told him early on, whenever I started getting up here, I said, you know, I said, I'm not going to get up there unless God lays something on my heart. I'm not going to do it. I know of people that goes on the internet and, pre and prints off a preaching that somebody else does, and I'm not going to do that. If, if, if I stand up here and I give you a message, it's because God gave it to me to give it to you. It's the only way I will do it. You know, when we went to India, I had two or three uh, messages ready, but not enough to last nine days. You know, and me and Don got to talking, and Don said, this is what I do. You know, this is what I do. I study. I read the Word of God. But most importantly, I listen to God. I wait for Him. It may just be one word that I get from Him. But I take that one word, and I, I, I go with it, you know. And I've noticed in my walk with God since I've been back, I've let things like this and like this electronics take me back over. Over there, I didn't have electronics. We had our phones, and you could get on Wi-Fi if you were in a certain place in the house. But if you weren't in that certain place, you couldn't even get on Wi-Fi. You know, it's, it, it just amazes me how much electronics has taken over. You know, I, now I know why. Who all here knows the word that the older generation had for the TV? What did they call it? One -eyed devil. The one-eyed devil. And now I know why. You know, because we will do whatever it takes to get that on. Whether it's wrapping tinfoil around antennas, whether it's hooking up, whether it's paying 60 bucks a month for cable, whether it's paying $130 a month for satellites. You know, some of us pay two or $300 a month on a cell phone bill, and then we'll pay extra on top of that so we can watch football on our phones. I know, I've done it. My phone's back there. I, you know, I've done it. But that's, that's what we do. We do whatever it takes to get it. So here's, here's what God, and I've completely got off of all of my notes. But this is, this is what God has laid on my heart. What are we doing? What are we going to do to make sure that we don't lose our shine? What are we going to do to make sure we don't lose our luster? Are we going to get in and study this book? Because that's what it's going to take. Yeah. It's going to take studying this book, and not only studying this book, but getting away. Whether it's in our prayer closet, whether it's in our office by ourselves, whatever it is, we have to make time. We have to take time and make it to study this book and to spend time with God. That's the only way we're going to draw closer to Him. And that's the only way we're going to keep our gold shining.
If we don't, we're going to lose our luster. And the, last, the latter part of that verse, what it is talking about, it says the, the scattered gems are scattered, or the sacred gems are scattered at every street corner. That means us. What happens whenever we're not studying our Bible and we're not coming to church and spending time with God? We start going astray. And before you know it, we miss one service. Then we miss another service. And then we miss a week of service. You know, and it just snowballs. It keeps going. If we don't get in this Word and do what we're supposed to do, we will lose our luster. Just like with the TVs of old, we do whatever we have to do. That's what we need to do, is whatever it takes. If it takes you turning off that TV, or turning off that radio, or whatever it is, you need to spend time in this Word. Because that's the only thing that can help you in this world. Mom and Daddy can't do it. Sister and Brother can't do it. Pastor can't do it for you. You've got to spend time in this Word. And you've got to listen to God. You know, whenever I first started this, I was one of the world's worst of getting down, saying my prayers, and I was gone. You know, not realizing I wasn't even giving God a chance. I was sitting down, doing what I was told, doing what I was supposed to do, so I thought, but I wasn't even giving God a chance to listen to see what he had to say for me. You know, and that's what Don was telling me. You know, not only reading your Bible and studying and, and knowing where to find everything, but just listening to God. God will talk to you if you give him a chance. But if you don't give him a chance, he's, you know, he can't do nothing without, without a willing subject. Because in the end, if we don't, we'll be scattered to the streets. That's, that's, that's just the simple fact of it. Brother Don. Let's go ahead and stand to our feet tonight. You know, if you're here and you was here this morning and this evening, God is speaking. You know, uh, I have seen and 